What's up, everybody? It's that time again. Listen, check this out. I want to thank you all for your patience. We were running a few minutes behind. If y'all have ever experienced any technical difficulties, that's what we had going on today. But we are absolutely on track now and we are here. And I'm excited because guess what, y'all? Today is what? It is Wellness Wednesday. And I'm coming to y'all live from the Venture Suite. Y'all can see it in the backdrop. And I'm excited to be here uh, with y'all today. I have a special guest that's on the line with me. And we're going to be sharing some things in regards to wellness, right? And not necessarily just around health and fitness and how we eat and all those good things. We're going to be hitting a variety of those as we continue on with this particular series. But today we're going to talk about something closer to the education side of things and the wellness related to that, but then also our mental wellness in our community. Because as you all know, we have identified, and especially in Franklin County, right, that uh, racism is a public health crisis. So as we think about uh, wellness, right, for us, um, and Wellness Wednesday, it's critical that we talk about other topics and other issues directly related, though, to our overall wellness. So with that being said, I want to make sure for those that don't know who we are, right? So uh, ColumbusBlack.com, we've been around for almost 16 years now. We started in 2005, and we are an online presence here connecting our community in Central Ohio to commerce and to culture, okay? So that's what we do. We do it through our omni-channel platform, which is through our website. So if you haven't visited, go to ColumbusBlack.com. Please go to the right-hand side and, and uh, subscribe to our mailing list, okay? That way you stay abreast of all the things that we have going on. But through our email blast, our text blast, our social media efforts, uh, through each of our channels on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, please go and like each of those and follow us. It's another way to stay abreast of what we have going on so you don't miss out on opportunities like this one. And in addition to that, we do live events. And now, obviously, with COVID, we do virtual events, right? So similar to this, and we also help to consult and host others who are looking to have platforms similar to what we do here. So that's a little bit about ColumbusBlack.com and what we do, right? So uh, one of the things that we'll also be doing during Wellness Wednesday is we will begin highlighting, right? So we just announced some programming, starting with Matchmaker Mondays on Mondays. We have Talent Tuesdays on Tuesdays, the Lunch and Learn. Um, on, when, on Tuesday nights, we have In the Midnight Hour. Wednesdays is Wellness Wednesdays. Obviously, Thursdays is Throwback Thursdays with our Support Black Business Series. Fridays is Food Delicious Friday, so stay tuned for that one. You can check everything out on ColumbusBlack.com. And Saturday, we're going to have the Beco system. So you want to check out the Beco system. And then also, we're going to be launching uh, Music Picks with Kim C. and Dami Styles, right? So we have this amazing lineup. But today is attributed to Wellness Wednesday. And part of what we'll be doing going forward on Wellness Wednesdays is we have what we call uh, Artist Voice, right? So in partnership, and our sponsor is Columbus Makes Art. And we'll have different artists that will come on for a short segment, right? And we'll start that actually tomorrow, doing Throwback Thursdays tomorrow night as well. We'll be highlighting our local artists who are doing great things and obviously sharing their voice through various forms of art. So we're excited about Columbus Makes Art, our partnership with them. We appreciate them being a sponsor for this to help us because we all know that arts help with our wellness. It balances us out. So without further ado, though, it's time for us to go ahead and jump on in. We want to talk about uh, some things that are going on. I want to introduce Jasper Person. So welcome to the show. You're not new to what we do here at Columbus Black. You've been on our shows a, a few different times. You've always dropped an amazing amount of knowledge, which I call gem drops, right? So he's always dropping those gems. And today, as we focus on the wellness piece, he's doing a lot in our community. But I'm going to let him tell you all about himself, and then we're going to get into what he's been doing and then what he thinks some of the solutions are as we're looking at our overall well-being. So, Jasper, I'm going to turn it over to you uh, to let the people know who you are and what you got going on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. And I appreciate it. Columbus Black in the building, right? <laughs> Extremely excited about the work um, and the engagement that's happening in our community. Um, we need it, right? It, it's, a time, it's time for us to put our hands to the plow um, and actually be a part of the solution, be a part of the work. Um, just a little bit about myself, born and raised Columbus, Ohio. I am the founder and CEO of Taylor Fit and Taylor Technologies. Uh, where we simply believe that, that education and resources and solutions should be designed specifically for you, right? Uh, outside of that work in the education space, uh, working with schools and school districts across the country um, over, over the last you know, 15 or so years, um, I've been blessed to be able to spend some time uh, and engage in policy, 
um, in, our, in the great city of Columbus as well, being able to see what I call behind the curtain, uh, politics of education and development as well. Um, you know, just blessed to be able to, to advance and, and engage with multiple different communities and schools and school districts and um, organizations, agencies, and companies and corporations to be able to provide and identify solutions to problems that exist. With that, I'm also the current board um, chair and president of the Masters Preparatory Academy. Shout out, right. shout out to Dr. Murphy, man. We got some great news coming forward. We'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, with the first African-American male boarding school in the country uh, coming, coming, coming soon, man. Super excited about that. Um, as, as well as a co-founder of the Village 2.0, um, you know, uh, co-creator within the Ohio Collective as well, um, and many other boards and committees um, throughout the community and, and beyond. And so extremely excited about being here and, and, and love the work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So Jasper, that's, that's outstanding. You are definitely doing quite a few things uh, in our community. Um, you know, you touched on education, you talked about the policy piece, um, obviously, you got uh, some great things going on with MPA, um, with Masters Prep, and, um, and just doing a number of different things to help us. You mentioned the, uh, the Ohio Collective, and I know you focus on the education pillar there as well. Mm -hmm. So why don't, we, why don't we start here, actually, um, as you talk about those different things, and we're here talking about Wellness Wednesday. Um, as you think about education, which I know is a major sweet spot for you, mm -hmm. um, why do you feel like, what, what's the connection between education and Wellness Wednesday. Like, so let's connect the dots for those that are saying, well, this is not health and me working out, like, right? Yeah. So help us understand what that correlation looks like based off of what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's funny, right? We get a lot of that, right? So a lot of times um, in, in spaces and places with different people and they see the, the logo, right? And, or the name of the company, they say Taylor Fit, right? Y'all the ones who either, y'all either, you know what I mean, designing the suits, nah, and I'm like, hit Brother Jones up for that, right? That ain't us. <laughs> Right. Or, or they like, or they like, so y'all coming in and getting us fit, right? We're getting to work out. Nah, we're not doing that either, right? Uh, the, the thing is, is understanding that um, at the end of the day, we, we, we believe that, uh, that all work specifically in education, community development, um, community impact and engagement should be tailored, right? Um, I tell teachers and principals and, and work with multiple different superintendents and people in policy space around education um, that at the end of the day, um, the school down the street is completely different, right? The, 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 the rec center down the street is completely different from this, yep, right? right. And, and so a lot of times what we do is we find ourselves um, thinking that we can create a solution um, that is one size fits all, mm. right? Um, and so, so what we understand is, um, and, and what we try to focus on is making sure that we actually tailor the work Right, we, we, we assess the situation for each individual school, for each individual community organization or agency, for each corporation that we're working with, right? Whatever it may be, we, we, we go in and assess what their personal individual needs are, right? And then we develop a plan, right? That's specific to, to them. And, okay. and I think for so long, um, not doing that, doing the one size fits all component um, has, has created a lot of, of issues while we're trying to provide solutions. And so um, when we talk about education, I, mean, I think you mentioned kind of connecting the dots between that and just wellness. At the, at, at the end of the day, um, we have to understand as a people um, that if we're not educating ourselves and creating awareness within ourselves and also developing our own systems to sustain us, right, for, for uh, the impact and the success that is needed, um, then we're finding ourselves running in circles, right? And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the huge part. And when we're running in circles, we're constantly, uh, you know, dealing with the, the, the many issues of physical, mental health, right, across the board um, for our communities. We know a lot of our, our schools and school districts have been in uh, failing situations where, where yeah. parents are dealing with uh, stress and depression and right the whole nine yards right it's just all of the they, they're all intertwined and connected um at the end of the day and so so we know that education I say this all the time that the education is not the key to success right but but I would say that it, it is a, a major portion of the door right um, and if we understand whether it's the knob or whether it's the hinges on the door um, for us to be able to get through and get to the next destination uh, we have to make sure that we are educating we're creating the systems 
and we're developing the awareness ourselves that's tailored to us. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I feel you there. You started touching on some things, right? So I, I hear this cookie cutter uh, approach that has been taken. Obviously, we know that that doesn't work, right? Because every situation, every community is definitely different. Um, and then I heard you, you really, you really started to tug on something as it turns to our wellness. And you started talking about the parents, right? Mm -hmm. And I think about right now what's going on with COVID, right? And how parents have basically become the educators in a lot of cases. And, um, and there's a lot of struggles and challenges there. And obviously that's impacting our well-being um, as well. Some, some before COVID and some now, and then obviously post, right? There's a direct correlation between education and responsibility and those things. So I, I, I'm, I'm interested in understanding your perspective as we think about COVID, right? Because we know it had a disproportionate impact on our community as we think about health, right? Um, from a physical standpoint, then obviously mentally the trauma of right going through a second pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So we think about the racism component, the first pandemic for us, and then the second one is dealing with the coronavirus. And what have you seen and what have you experienced as it ties to education and this parenting and all the things that you all are dealing with around education as it relates to even COVID and health and mental wellness? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question, Kev. It's a it's a it's a never ending question too, right? Uh, one of the things that we say in our trainings and engagement uh, with 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 our with our educators and, and principals and parents and students um, is that we have to accept and expect, right? The fact that mm -hmm. that today when we finish this workshop, when we finish this training, when we finish this engagement, whatever we're doing, um, that this is not the end, right? Uh, because this is an ongoing work. This is an ongoing process, right? And we always talk about being able to understand the value of success through the process of what we're doing. And so, and so I personally believe, um, and this is just me, right? A lot of my colleagues and people that I rock with, uh, we, we have different views, right? But I personally believe that in the education space, depending on how we look at it, because I always talk about perspective and perception, right? Um, that COVID has been a blessing, right? Uh, the, the, okay. the second pandemic, as, 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 you, as, as you so eloquently spoke, um, for certain communities um, has created an opportunity for, for all to see, mm. right? For everyone to see the issues that exist, right? I, I don't know about you, but uh, for, the, for the first time, I, I know I, I, I heard about redlining years ago Right. Um, but but now everywhere you turn, the conversation is about redlining. I've heard about uh, the digital divide for years, uh, you know, rocking with my guy, Zoe and, and, and Larry and them out in San Francisco doing work with Get Creative, you know, yeah. spreading, spreading the news and the information, the reason why we need to engage in technology in our classrooms. Well, COVID basically showed the truth. Right. Yeah. The, the digital right. divide that exists is, is directly connected to the redlining issues that we've seen for generations is directly connected to every single systemic issue um, that, that has hindered and impacted our community. And, okay. so, and so when we look at education and the impact that it has on not just the generation that we're dealing with now, but generations to come. And so there's a lot of conversation around learning loss and, and, and what we have to do and how we can do it and, and what we need to do in our schools. And, and I always, uh, push the needle in the education space around family engagement. It's a pillar of ours, okay. right? And, and I believe that that's an issue that within the education system, because the system was not um, and, and hasn't been designed um, to truly be able to uh, develop and build in that space. Uh, we've had generations of families um, that have been disconnected from the education system. I don't know how many parents over the years have said, that's not the way I was taught how to do that math equation, right? And you sit down with your kids and they're like, well, my teacher didn't tell me how to do it this way. And the next thing you know, you're going back and forth. And, and, and then you, the, the parent uh, hopefully reaches out to the teacher and, yeah. and asks, asks for a request for a parent-teacher conference to show you how to do this equation totally different from the way that you did it in the 70s or 80s or whatever it may be, right? And so when, when you're sitting in that situation in, in that space, there's a divide that's being created even within the system of education. So mm -hmm. my children now look at me and then they begin to devalue, right? Me when it comes to their education because what I've learned and what I'm able to incorporate and support them on 
is no longer the way that it should be taught. And so we have to get back to developing a true foundation for family in the education system, right? So that's why we focus so much on empowering parents when it comes to advocacy, right? And engagement with their students, with their principals, with their teachers, right? And allowing them to see and to understand the impact that they can and should be making through the process. No longer should we literally just be dropping our kids off at the schoolhouse and, and leaving it up to the system and the amazing teachers and principals and administrators that are there, right? But the reality is that they can't do this on their own, right? We need our parents, we need our community, we need our family, right? To be right there with us within the educational process, right? Okay. And so it's extremely important Right, that we that we dig in with our parents, that we give them the resources, that we we find our way going the extra mile, giving more, showing more empathy and, and understanding for our parents because our parents are dealing with a lot. Right, yeah. there's there's a lot going on and things have shifted uh, from a systematic standpoint, and so we need to make sure from a, from an educational standpoint that we're doing what we can do to make sure that our parents and our families and our communities are involved in the educational process of our young people. And our mm. Man, that seems like, first of all, powerful, powerful, powerful message, right? Completely aligned. And clearly, if, the, if our parents are not intricately involved in that process, it's a huge miss, there's a huge gap, right? So obviously, you, you know, we talk a lot about, especially on our business side, we talk about problem and solution, right? Clearly there's a problem. Uh, with Telefit, you've identified a solution, right? Can you walk us through, like, what steps have you taken or been able to take to help close the gaps that you're talking about and, and create this family-based uh, and family-oriented education process to help with the overall wellness and growth of our youth and our, and our families? Mm -hmm. so, so one of the beautiful things that, um, that, that we've been blessed to do is to be able to go into to, to school buildings and school districts um, and, and, do, and work directly with uh, administrators and teachers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we call, we call them front lines, right? The front liners, yeah. right? The individuals who are on the front line each and every day. But one of the things that, that um, a lot of times our, our amazing principals and teachers and educators in the buildings don't have the ability to do the access, the capacity, or the resources to do is to really connect the dots with the community, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that we find ourselves doing is going through when we start to work with the school, uh, obviously doing some assessment, identifying what the culture is in the building, right? Knocking on doors within the community, talking to business owners, identifying how they see the school in their community, right? Okay. Because we talk about cultural lenses that exist. And so when those students and those teachers are outside of those buildings, somebody else is creating a lens, right? And so nine out of 10 times, it's either our media, right, our news, right, or, you know, uh, the news, the local newspaper talking about the negative things of that school or that district that exists. And so what we like to do is go out and find individuals in those communities surrounding those schools who, who can speak to truth, who can speak to their personal experiences, because a lot of times the lens is created by people who really aren't in that space and have no real understanding. All they're doing is looking at data or numbers or information and spitting off a whole bunch of negative information um, to create negative lens. And so we go in and we do these assessment components, right, yeah. to connect the dots. And then we identify plans, right? And so some of our plans are around being able to, to do what we call um, family academies, right, on Saturday mornings or throughout the weekday, depending on once we survey our parents and we find out when our parents are available, right? A lot of times, you know, schools are scheduled things and we don't even know when our, when the majority of our parents are available, right? So we do in those assessments, right, to find out, okay, when are these parents available? When do we have access to them, right? When, when are they not working? And, and then how do we adjust that and make sure that we're, we're fitting and being able to connect the dots with the majority of them? And so- hey, can, you, can you hold your thought right there for one second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is all, don't lose your thought, right? This is to all the parents out there. Have you ever wondered, right, when the, when the school schedule comes out or it is an event or something, and it's like, I can't attend this, right? This is like, this is not the optimal time. So who makes that decision that we can just do this at any point in time for parents to just show up and be there, like, during work hours, right? Um, but anyway, I'm sorry. That's a sidebar. I just had to throw it out there because that's been a question as, as my kids grew up. 
that we've always asked is like, how do you how, like, how do you think about this? So thank you for talking about how you take that as a, and I, I dropped that because I want you to people to understand what you started with foundationally is saying for the parents, what works for you first, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 you're supposed to do one of these right there because that's a gym, dude, right? Because <laughs> when, when, when we talk about the issues that we deal with within our schools and our school systems and our community, uh, a lot of times the people who are making the decisions are not connected to the people who it's impacting, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about our parents identifying you know, where they are, what their needs are through those assessment tools and resources and when they're available. And then, then we construct, right, uh, the engagement, right? Then we construct the workshops and the trainings. Uh, we found ourselves being able to identify uh, spaces and environments where we have been able to, to be blessed to bring parents and teachers into workshops together, right? Um, we, we work with schools who had a, a number of uh, high ESL population, um, you know, as the language barrier issue and just a cultural, you know, barrier issue that exists in identifying the need to be able to help develop relationships with our teachers and our parents in the same space, right? And so some of the trainings and workshops and professional developments that you would give to your teachers, we also need to be involved in and engaging our parents with. We've done a number of, we call them trauma transformed. Right, and so obviously this is a Wellness Wednesday, right? And so we talk about the trauma that our community, our parents, our students, our teachers, everybody is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, so why do we have professional development just to inform our, our educators and, and, and people in these spaces instead of giving them the resources to transform that? And one of the ways that we, we allow them to transform trauma is to be able to identify and develop relationship with individuals that they consistently are working with in that space. And so why not have trauma transformed trainings with parents and teachers in the same space? And then you, you realize and you, you, you know, the impact of what parents are dealing with and what they're going through. Right? We, we hear so many times from administrators and teachers, right? And, and the stress, when a parent comes up to the school or they're getting calls from the school, nine out of 10 times care is negative. Mm, so, there's something right, wrong right right, right right there's something there's something wrong right and so and and when you already are looking at you know uh this the disparate communities and 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 different social issues within those communities the the negative you know impact that exists consistently through that trauma through their personal experience as a parent because the last time i was in school i was suspended the last time my parent came up to the school they cussed out the principal Right. And so I am going to do also what I've learned. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we also have to help parents do and people in the community is to relearn the behavior that they've been programmed to see and experience within the educational space. But we can't do that if we're not connecting the dots properly, if we really don't understand what their needs are, if we're really not meeting them where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the components that we develop for you know, solutions in the communities and being able to bring uh, families and parents and community to our schools and to impact and engage them. Oh, okay, okay. So listen, first of all, thank you so much for all that you and uh, your company and organization are doing to, to actually tell her uh, to, to our parents. I think that's critically important. And obviously with the optimal goal is helping our children and our youth, right? To have the, the support structure that they need and you're doing it in such a collaborative, family-oriented way. So thank you for, for your efforts, your innovative ways of going about that as well, right? Mm -hmm, so right. with that, I wanna, I wanna transition a little bit to some of the other things that you mentioned, right? You talked mm -hmm. about policy uh, a little earlier, right? Can you help us to understand like what's going, like what's really going on out there that we may not know about when it comes to policy and decisions that are being made as it relates to education and you talk about a bunch of different things. You talk about the digital divide and all this other stuff. What 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 else is going on that people may not be aware of? So so there's a obviously um, when we look when we look at where we are, right? Um, still trying to figure out COVID. Still trying to figure out you know with, within our schools and our communities um, how we continue to pivot and adjust so that we can win, right? Um, right now, I think we're we're in a place where. Um, there's so many individuals within uh, legislation and policy who are looking um, to turn things around, by right? looking to adjust um, in, in, in a number of places concerning certain communities, 
right? And so when we, when we talk about education, though, I think um, talking, getting back to COVID, looking at the digital divide and the things that kind of we, what we call were floated to the surface um, when it comes to our schools not, you know, not having the resources that they need um, just now in 2020, being able to get, you know, students devices and, and making sure that everybody has access to internet and, and being able to engage in the virtual space from an educational component, you know, allows us and lets us know that that um, there, there's been some major gaps that exist, right? right? And we know that even in this time and this distance in the virtual space, gaps continue to be created, yeah. right? And widen. Right. And so one of the things that, um, that we have to focus on as a community and as a people is number one, being aware um, mm-hmm. of, of what's, what's being done within the spaces of our policymakers when it comes to our school boards, when it comes to our city council members, when it comes to our county commissioners, right? And then when it, even on a state level, right? Mm-hmm. Making sure that as parents and as community members, right? We're engaging in that space. We're at least educated and have some understanding of what that looks like, uh, what, what's being done, what's kind of coming our way, what, what levies are being passed from, a, right. you know, from an infrastructural standpoint in our communities, right? How housing is shifting, Right. Um, the, as far as the school district levies and bills, right? there's, there's so many things that are constantly moving that a lot of times the community is unaware of um, because we're not engaged in that space. But so much of it is, too, is because there's, there's almost been this disconnect. Right. Just like we talked about with parents and the educational process of their students. A yeah. lot of times there's a huge disconnect between policy and legislation. Right. Mm-hmm. And the community that it impacts. OK. Um, and, and so I, I, I talk about all the time when, when, um, when, when I spent time down in city council, right, with the, in the city of Columbus, uh, there would be certain days where, you, where I would get hundreds of calls, right? Uh, you know, I was working with now Judge Page and then Councilwoman Page. Um, yeah. and, and, and there would be so many calls that would be coming in on certain days. And, and guess what, Kev? Majority of those calls would be focused on one or two communities, right? Mm-hmm. And, and what would happen is, is that those communities would weigh in on the legislation and policy that was being, being um, looked at and written, you know, in, during that time. And they, they wanted to voice their opinions concerning the things that were happening from as, as small as what was going on in their, in their community recreation center, from a sidewalk that needed to be built or, right, what, whatever it may be um, in those communities they would voice their opinions, right? And, yeah. and, and it had to be heard. And so once they did that, right, legislation and policy would adjust to that. And so um, we understand oh. that where the people is, there's power. There you go, drop them, drop them, drop them, oh. drop them. Oh. And so we want to encourage our community, right, to number one, be aware, mm. right, of, of policy and legislation and how it's impacting our communities. Right. Um, and, and then also to not only be aware, but mobilize um, to be able to become a voice for our communities. And so, um, you know, I think I think at the end of the day, that's key. If we don't if we don't understand, if we're not aware, if we're not educated, um, then we can't have a healthy community because mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. people who are not involved in our community will make the decisions for our community, will Uh-oh. change the policies for our community, will, okay. you know, reconstruct. Um, in our communities, and it impacts our each and every every day and individuals that are involved, but not those individuals who live there. Oh wow, wow! Yes, sir. You dropped it again. Your so he he forced me to it, and it's it's not a fast one. It's a slow motion because he's just dropping the knowledge and those gems, right? So here's the thing, man. You talked about the awareness, starting with the awareness. We have to have that knowledge. That's the basics of the ed- of education, mm-hmm. right? We have to be educated on what is actually even being proposed for us in our communities, right? That's number one. But then you talked about the involvement, right? So getting involved. So do me a favor, go back, because I, I know a lot of times people say, you know, they're they make they they're making these changes, they're making these decisions for us. And so if you simplify that again, how, like you say, hey, here's one, two or three things you can do personally, you today can start doing to be able to have a voice and make a difference in those decisions. What are they again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so number one, number one, right. Number one, and I'll backtrack on this. Number one, yeah. right. Um, we need to 
make sure as a community and as a people, right, that we are aware and that we are educated on the policies. Because mm. every single Monday in City Hall, mm-hmm. right, every single uh, whatever, ever Tuesday or whenever it is for um, our school boards, depending on what school district you're in, right, yeah. um, you know, every there, there's, there's people who are having conversations and sitting at tables who are writing legislation and policy and having conversation about what should happen and how it should happen for our communities, mm. right? But if we, as the community, are not aware and not educated, right, then at the end of the day, we can't have a voice. And so that's simply calling, mm. right? <laughs> you, can, you can look online, right, uh, the, the, depending on, you know, what, what area and what region you're in, um, and call down to the city and figure out who you need to be talking to as far as your, you know, uh, community advocacy is concerned and, the, and those community members who sit on some of those boards who then advocate to our council members to, when it comes to policy. But then you could also find yourself, you know, downloading those PDFs of policy and legislation that's going through, whether it's through your school board or through your local government so that you can have discussions and conversations within your own community about what's going on, right? And so, so really simple steps, right? Make a call, download a PDF, go online to create awareness and education around what's happening, right, within our own communities. And then we're charged to educate each other. We're charged to communicate and talk about that and create the voice that we need to make sure that the changes are being made are for us, right? Okay. Not for us. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay. All right. So listen, y'all. He just dropped some more knowledge in those gems, right? On how to actually make the difference, right? That's so important because education is the foundation, y'all. It's the foundation, and we have to look at it, I think, differently than we have in the past. And it is impacting so much of our well-being. Like, if you don't have the foundation, you can't build. Okay. So we need to take this very, very seriously. So I think sometimes, Jasper, we look at, you know, health on the outside, right? The physical being of, of what it is. And we look at some of this, like we look at somebody and say, they look healthy, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. They can have a million things going on up here, yeah. right? And yeah. a million things going on in here. And uh, when it comes to that foundation, it's so important. So thank you for dropping those, those nuggets for us, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so listen, so let's let's move on from there, right? So you have uh, you know, built your 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 business and you're helping out, um, doing a lot of different things. You just talked about the policy piece as well. Now in the community, right? Like we think about this this uh, public health crisis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what has been going on with us in this pandemic and what we continue to face. I know that there's some work that you're doing as well. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that work and and why it's so important as it relates to our well-being in our communities and even able to be able to walk and breathe and make it home alive. So anything you want to talk about there? Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Um, you know, we've been working, and, 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 and so this, once again, man, because education is my mountain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the work that we do when it comes to training and workshops um, in the education space in our schools, we've been working diligently to identify uh, solutions Right, uh, around our community engagement in our schools and our young people um, when it comes to law enforcement, right? when it comes to policy, when it comes to uh, you know, uh, civil leadership and engagement for young people, right? and just developing leaders um, in our community. Right? We, we, we were extremely blessed this summer to spend some time and engage with a number of young African-American males throughout the county. Um, um, for, for a number of weeks and we were blessed to help them and, and, and engage them to see themselves uh, differently. And, and, and in that space, bringing on individuals, um, leaders from a, across the country, uh, but you know, particularly individuals locally who are doing some amazing work that are African-American males in, in multiple different spaces, yeah. um, you know, making huge impact. And one of the things that working with those young men throughout the summer that we identified in our Ubuntu Leadership Institute um, was that those young men, they wanted someone to listen to them about what they were experiencing and what was going on. Mm. 
Like um, a number of, 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 come on, man. They they just wanted somebody to listen to them. Wow. You know, we, what's we, the age, real quick. What's the age group that you that you're working with? So we were working with, with high schoolers. We were in, in high school. Actually, last, last summer we started off with uh, rising ninth graders. So our eighth and, and ninth grade, ninth grade rising tenth graders. This this year we'll go into rising eleventh graders with, with that group as well. Uh, we're, we're, at, we're hoping to be able to do some residential um, on Ohio State's campus with the Ubuntu Leadership Institute, with the Ty Bell um, Institute, another collaboration with different colleges within nice. the university. But but this whole thing around these these African American males needing someone to listen, like right? mm-hmm. someone to to be there consistently. We worked with them. Um, I think it was almost eight weeks, uh, Monday through Friday, and we did Saturday uh, in family engagement with those young men as well, right? Um, because we know that how important that is. But we did all that in a virtual space, right? They worked on developing their own LLCs. They worked on um, you know understanding and developing tracks for. Uh, technology engagement. They they um, they also did social justice work with a number of our um, uh, um, judges and attorneys throughout the county and throughout the state. Actually, um, you know, looking at social justice and 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 the whole thing about them having somebody to listen to and allowing their voice to be heard during that time specifically was extremely impactful and important for me. Mm-hmm. Right, as someone who. Like I see myself as someone who obviously is a servant leader, um, but I think engaging with those young men over the summer um, cre- created a, a, a different place in my heart to understand the need um, for us to work and to fill in in those gaps of communication and engagement for what they were seeing and how they were being taught. Because some of our young men were a part of protests, right? We had young men on you know, on, 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 on our institute whose friends were murdered during the summer while we were engaging with them, right? Um, you know, and so we, and, and, and when you're in that space um, and they're dealing with that and they're seeing, you know, the police brutality and, and dealing with, uh, you know, the, the political landscape and the, the social unjust and things that are going on within the community and all these things are surfacing while they're also like, I don't know what school looks like. I, I don't have uh, resources, right, to, to, you know, make sure I can do what I need to do academically. And I'm trying to figure out how to maneuver and adjust to that. But, but this whole other side of I just need somebody to listen, right? And I know there's some great work that's being done in the community now with, with, with African-American males specifically and, and young women of color also, too, throughout the city of Columbus. People are like coming together and organizing um, to get young people to the table to have these conversations. Um, around what it is that they need and what they're seeing and how it's impacting them. But one of the things that, that was pointed out was, um, was really the, the need to understand um, when it comes to our law enforcement. And so one of the things that we did uh, during that time was we had a number of police officers this summer in the midst of, of all the chaos and craziness going on, uh, we had police officers come on and engage with our young men. Some days they had on uniforms, some days they didn't. And one of the things that was said during that time from one of our young men that, that struck me and sticks with me, and, and now even the work that we're doing um, to engage some law enforcement and training and implicit bias and, and, and you know, uh, systemic racism and all of these other cultural components um, is this. He said, I've never seen and I never thought about a police officer being a father. Mm. Wow. Right. And so, <laughs> and so when, when you think about how powerful that is. Yeah. Wow. Right. It makes you, it makes you stop for a moment and recognize how and what our young people are processing mentally and emotionally yeah. and socially each and every day through their experiences and what they're seeing on social media, what they're seeing on the news and how it's impacting them. And so we know we have a great real, great deal of work to do when it comes to engaging our community, engaging our young people, right? As well as engaging our law enforcement, as well as engaging our teachers, right? Where the foundational component of these things um, are built out. 
Um, and so we're, we're creating what, what, what we always call, and what you mentioned a lot of times, is that ecosystem within those components, right? Yeah. That allow them to see themselves a part of the solution, yeah. right? To develop relationships with our law enforcement, to develop relationships with our, with our teachers and our parents and our community um, across the board. So just, just digging in, man, to do the real grassroots work um, that has to and needs to be done. And we're excited about it. And we'll have some, we'll have some announcements coming out here soon and have some individuals that I'm doing some great work in that space with to come on and engage with us um, around the solutions that we're, we're identifying. That's outstanding. And we definitely look forward to that, right? So one of the great things is that you obviously are working on a number of different things. You have these great relationships. You're so tied to so many things that really relate to this wellness Wednesday piece, right? Um, especially around education, but then also the, the mental wellness component. Um, and uh, when it comes to what we're talking about with the racial disparity piece and racism, obviously there's a lot that you all are doing there to help educate and working with the right people to get on the front end of it, right? Mm -hmm. to, uh, to rectify the systemic issues that, that have existed for way too long. So um, I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Appreciate you being here with us. You know, you, you talked about the youth. We, uh, you mentioned it earlier, we didn't, we didn't plug it hard enough with MPA, but I uh, want to make sure you get a, a quick on. second as we're wrapping up on Come time on. to talk about anything you want to with, with MPA uh, to Come plug on. it and then we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, you know, it's the secret sauce, man. It's the secret sauce. So I'll be, I'll be holding it close to the chest, uh, right? Uh, you, uh, you, you can wait, you can hold it. You can wait. Come on. Wait. <laughs> Come on, it's yo yo yo. So no no no, I'll just drop, I'll just drop something, man. We're we're uh, extremely excited. Uh, we're we're in the process of of uh, making the reality of, of 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 the vision. Um, and colleague of of mine and mentor of mine, uh, Dr. Robert Murphy, um, a reality right of the first African American male boarding school in the country. And we got some exciting news coming around the corner. Uh, okay. we're, we're building and connecting the dots, man. Things are just aligning. Right, wow. as, as, as God does. And sometimes right. we, we look at it and it's like, you know what I mean? It's an accident, but he's like, it's on purpose, right? And so, <laughs> and so uh, just, just super excited, man. Um, looking forward to sharing more um, yeah. and, and, and the work that's being done in that space, man. And so we, we're working, man. We're, di we're digging yeah. in, we're, we're identifying the solutions and, and people are coming together. People are coming to the table like, man, what can I do? Sweet. Right, how can I support? Right, how can I jump in? Right, yep. what, what, it, what is it that we need to do in our community to connect the dots, right? And so we're super excited about um, just the energy that, that, that's moving and flowing right now um, in the space, man. And so super, super excited, um, you know, to be able to dig into that as, 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 as the time goes on and, and more announcements and engagements that are connected to that so that the community can be involved. Outstanding, outstanding. So thank you for an early plug. Y'all got a sneak peek on that one. We'll learn more later, of course. And uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and, and get toward uh, wrap up, right? So, so Jasper, before we get get to wrap up, uh, a couple of things. If somebody wanted to reach out to you at Telefit, uh, they heard what you said today. They're like, man, I want to connect with him and his organization, what they have going on. Uh, how do people get in contact with you? Man, dope, dope, dope. So, so what you want to do is, um, and we can obviously drop some of that information on, um, through Columbus Black, man, but but simply you just you know hit the website up, right? Uh, you know tailorfit.org, right? Hit the website up. Uh, we got a space in there where you can drop questions and um, you know send your information. Um, if you want to di directly connect with us, we can. We would love to you know identify what's going on, what the problems are, um, and to tailor solutions for your schools, your community organizations. Um, and, and, and be able to, to, to move on from there. And all information, um, you know, is, is plugged and connected there as well. And so, um, yep, yep, super simple, okay. super simple, baby. Easy enough, easy enough, all right. So, and then with that being said, uh, as we're going to final wrap up, um, is there anything, you know, I talk about this all the time, you know, people get ready to come on the show and they're like, oh yeah, I gotta make sure I drop this when I'm on the show with Kev. And then guess what, the show ends and they're like, Ah oh, man, I meant to talk about this. So before we wrap up, is there anything that you really, really want to drop or share uh, so you wouldn't be remiss later uh, yeah. that we may have missed so far? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. One one thing that I do, I do want, I do want to share. Um, first off, I, can, I want to give a shout out to my moms. Right. Okay. Uh, big ups on on, on my moms. I'll be person. 
Uh, today is actually her 70th birthday. Happy right? birthday, mom. Happy birthday, mom. So, <laughs> so we out here winning, right? Um, yeah. but, but, but one thing that I, I, I do want to share uh, just, just with the community as a whole is that we've got, you know, there's a number of things, moving parts um, here in our community um, with us as a people and what we're doing from education to economics, right, to, to health, to our schools, right? Just so, so much going on. I just want to encourage everybody, yeah. right, um, to find themselves in a place where, number one, um, you can become reflective, right, um, and, you, and you reflect on, on self, right, <clears throat> and you identify and you look at yourself, right, and, and, and really are able to identify individuals um, that you need to surround yourself with, mm. right, this is, this is huge Point because we... We, we talk about health, we talk about, right, we're talking about wellness, um, and so much of that is developed through community. Yes. Uh, and, and true community is, is allowing ourselves to lock arms with individuals who are like-minded, to lock arms with individuals who don't have the same faith or values that you have. So you can be in conversations and rooms <clears throat> where you have to find yourself um, in where, where you don't agree, right? Mm. So that you can see yourself and your views differently. Because that's a part of growth, right? And so, them gems. man, I, I just want to encourage people, man, to, to engage in community, right? To find yourself surrounded around individuals and people who are doing what it is that you desire to do, but then also, too, around individuals who desire to do what you're doing, right? Because as a people, what we don't do is that we, I don't believe that we find ourselves um, in places where we're developing succession, right? And that's okay. a whole nother okay. conversation. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Um, and so to be well and to be well long, right, we have to give of ourselves so others who are following us will have the roadblock and the pathway to be able to, to make the leaps that they need to make, man. So I just want to encourage everybody, right, uh, self reflect, right, dig yeah. in. Uh, this is the time for you to develop and to build, but you got to do it with community. And so let's make it happen, people. Love. Wow, 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 wow. You know, that's one of the things, man, you just dropped some more gems, as y'all can see. He's over here making it happen. Uh, literally, as one of those things that somebody say, hey, I don't want to watch the whole video. I'm telling him, hey, you need to go to this portion. <laughs> you need to hear this wrap up because he just dropped some powerful, heavy gems in like two minutes. So listen and learn. That's what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for joining us, right, for Wellness Wednesdays, Lunch and Learn, presented by ColumbusBlack.com, sponsored by Columbus Makes Art. And um, I want to thank Jasper for joining us today for our kickoff. This is our first virtual Wellness Wednesday. There's going to be more to come every week at 12 o'clock. We're going to have a number of professionals tied to health and fitness and mental wellness and education and, uh, and racial matters, right, that will come on this show and they will help to educate us. So when you sit down for lunch on Wednesdays, you can actually learn something as well at the same time. So with that being said, remember to check us out, columbusblack.com. Visit the website. Join our mailing list so that you don't miss out on all the great things that are, that are happening. I'm going to give you an example of what I mean, right? So I'm about to go ahead and I'm going to actually share my screen. And when I share the screen, you all can see there's a special event coming up. It's a crucial COVID conversation with brilliant Black women, right? And it's happening mm -hmm. this Friday, uh, the 26th, from 12 to 1. So that's that's the lunch and learn in itself, right? 12 to 1. So y'all are going to want to check that out. Um, there's a live conversation. You can see who the panelists are. We got Dr. Mashika Roberts on there, Dr. Karen Wurrapa, uh, Tracy Maxwell Hurd, right? Uh, many of you know her. And then obviously, uh, Mrs. Neely is going to be on the line as well. So this amazing panel, and this is being hosted by Cosi, right? And it's gonna it's gonna take it's taking a partnership with the uh with the King Arts Complex as well. Obviously, Columbus Black is a media partner. Also, uh the Columbus uh, uh Kappa Foundation is affiliated with this effort and their efforts to make sure our community is focused on what's right around our health in the Columbus Alumni Chapter, Kappa Alpha Psi as well. So just make sure you all check it out. We have some other uh, uh, sponsors or partners on there. Make sure y'all check this out. This will be going out on our email blast for Columbus Black or through ColumbusBlack.com. So once again, you want to check it out. That's why you want to be on our mailing list. So you don't miss out on amazing opportunities and activities just like this one. So make sure you're prepared 
at noon to one on Friday to listen to this. COVID is real, it's serious. And you're gonna hear these brilliant black women talking about the vaccine, COVID and other health matters tied to our community. So this is what we do, all right? So with that being said, make sure you all follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, as well as on YouTube. Stay connected to, to what we have going on. And as we're wrapping up, we had a few minutes left. Um, I wanna make sure you all uh, recognize tomorrow, right? Throwback Thursdays. Make sure you join us for Throwback Thursdays tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Uh, we're gonna have some special guests on there. Uh, we have, actually we have Otto Beatty that's gonna be on. So you all know him. So from a business standpoint, you know you're gonna learn something. It's gonna be dropping gems like Jasper was doing <laughs> the whole hour dropping those gems, right? Uh, and then we have Dante on the line. Dante is a, a local artist that will be featured as well tomorrow. So you're gonna wanna come and participate and check that out. And then Friday, Food Delicious Fridays, you do not want to miss mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Adrian yeah. Sullivan of Sully's Kitchen at 7 p.m. live right here on our Facebook page. You're gonna wanna check that out. Get ready for some delicious cooking that's gonna happen uh, as well. And then don't forget Saturday with the Beco system, we're gonna have a, an amazing lineup of some entrepreneurs, startup founders, that will be uh, sharing their perspectives on the ecosystem, the black and brown ecosystem, AKA the Beco system. So make sure y'all check us out. And that's obviously sponsored by Black Hack, Color Coded Labs, Venture Suite, y'all see in the backdrop. Uh, and it's also sponsored by Venture Combine and 1921 Ventures as we're looking to make some moves in the ecosystem this year. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Uh, I always tell y'all when we get ready to go, in order to be more successful in your future, you need to understand a little bit more about your past. I hope you all enjoyed the show and that you all had a blast. And with that being said, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and uh, check out everything else we have going on on ColumbusBlack.com. I appreciate each of you. Jasper, you already know, man. Take care of yourself. Have a good one. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Wear your mask, all that good stuff, and stay tailored fit. All right? No, That's how we do it. <laughs> all right, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Bless. And uh, we'll catch up soon.